Savior Jesus Christ and for the Holy Ghost as well as in my soul. I thank God for my wife and my children. Amen. I thank God for our great leadership here. Amen. Our General Seal Mother Benson. Amen. The most anointed mother that I know. Thank God. Amen. For our General Bishop. Amen. The pastor of the Headquarters Church, Bishop Alan D. Benson Sr. I thank God. Amen. For our co-pastor, co-pastor Agnes Benson. Amen. We thank God, amen, that we are in celebration of 48 years. And I just bless the Lord, amen, because truly the Lord has given these words to be praised. Amen. I have a word I want to share with you all today, amen, that's been resonated in my soul for about two months. Amen. And I, I went down in prayer this morning and God confirmed some things. And, and then Brother Tyrone confirmed it through the scripture. Glory to God, and then the praise team confirmed it, amen, through the worship, amen. Because truly, amen, I want to be an encouragement, amen, to the saints of the Most High God. Amen, because truly we are in a time now where we have to fight for our life, amen. I told, I tell folks on the job, and I got too old to run, so I'm just going to have to stand here and fight. Glory to God, amen. So if you come at me wrong, I'm going to have to stand here and fight. I didn't tell him how I was going to fight. I just said I'm about to stand here and fight. Amen. But I do bless the Lord. Amen. And 
And that's something that God has been in wrestling in my spirit, amen. And, and before I, I, I bring forth the word, amen, that there's something that I have to do because I want to free myself up, amen. Amen. So that we can go forth and do the will of God. Amen. But there's two people, amen, that I want to pray for, amen. Because I've been praying for these two because I see ministry, amen. And the adversary continues to try to attack their bodies. And, and I know in my spirit that they have a ministry for God. And I know God wants to use them, amen, in an awesome way. Glory to God. And so I want to call Brother Dietrich and I want to call Sister Keisha, amen. Because I've been praying steadfastly and very hard for them, amen. amen. Because I know God has ministry for them. Because see, many of you all may not know but right now, they want to study Brother Dietrich. Because they don't understand how a young man that's been fighting this spirit called sick of sin. They don't understand how this young man is still yet holding on. So many of y'all may not know that, but they want to study this brother. Amen. And him and I have had conversations, amen. And I remember when he was younger, Bishop and I used to go up to Children's Hospital. All, every time since I were called, we was there. And Brother DJ, we was in there playing basketball or whatever with him. And Brother DJ always get us snacks and stuff. And, 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 and when you go into a hospital like that, and you see young people that's being attacked with all kinds of things in their bodies, in their minds, you know, it, 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 it pulls at your heart. I don't know about y'all, but it pulls at my heart. But I believe these two have a ministry, amen. Because since they want to study this brother, they're going to find out that the reason why they both hold it on is because of Jesus. Right. They're going to find out that the reason why they're both still yet here is because of Jesus. Yeah. And there's others that have gone on, glory yeah. to God, but yet they're still standing. It's because of Jesus. Yeah. And I'm not pumping us up, but it's because of true deliverance. Right. Because we are a deliverance ministry. That's Amen. Right. Glory to God. Amen. And so, I don't know about y'all, but we got to start acting more like we're a deliverance ministry. Amen? Amen. We got to start knocking the devil out. Amen? Amen. Amen. We got to knock him out. Glory to God. So, Sister Keisha, if you will come, amen. <laughs> Keisha, I, I see your writings a lot of times. And you be like, Lord, take this pain from me. And when I see that, it, it does something to my heart. You know, because I'm like, you're a child of God. And I want people to be able to see and hear your testimony of how one day, when I didn't expect it, God showed up. And I got up and I didn't have the pains and the aches. And on my birthday, I wasn't in the hospital. Because I used to hear you say that often. Every time my birthday came, I'm in the hospital. But I just want God to do my miraculous thing for both of you all. Because I believe that God can take you all up and down the East Coast. That's my belief. Amen. That as they study you, they're going to find out who is this man that God is mindful of him? Who is he? He's a child of the king. Who is this woman that God is mindful of her? She is a child of the king. Glory to God. Because I, I, I mean, I want God to purify your blood. I want God to just, just, just take it out you. But there was a young lady, she, she, when she was younger, her, her grandmother and her mom had told me she had sickle cell. And the doctors didn't expect her to go past the age of three. But I prayed, I, I, I labored for her, and God kept her until she was 21. You know, and her family, that drew them closer to the Lord because they thought for sure before three that she was going to be gone. And so today, I just want to pray for both of you all. I want to lay hands on both of you all. Amen. And asking God to just purify your blood. To make you completely whole. So that you can go and tell your testimony. So that you can be on the news. So that you can be on the television. And you can be on the talk shows. They talk about everything else. But I want them to talk about Keisha being delivered. I want them to talk about Dietrich being delivered. They talk about everything else on the news. Let us now talk about some deliverance on the news. Yes. Let us talk about the hand of God yes. on the news. Yes. So that they can see God 
so that they will recognize God. So that when they see things happening in this land, that they will know that it was God. That's why God gave you a daughter that knows how to pray. God, I pray now, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, that as you purify their blood, God, take every ounce, God, of sickle cell out of their bodies in the name of Jesus. God, and I pray that you raise them up, God, for great testimonials, Father, throughout the land, oh God. God, as they go throughout the land, God, and give their testimony. God, when they talk about you, Father, it's going to draw folks closer to you, God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh God, man may doubt, but believers believe, oh God. So today we believe by faith, oh God, that you're going to do a great work in both their bodies, God. Yes. Yes. I am God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. God, rescue them right now. Deliver them right now. Make them free right now. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh God, when they go to the hospital, God, it'll be to visit, oh God. It'll be to testify, God. It'll be to pray for those, God, who are like they were, God, in the name of Jesus. God said, by your stripes I am healed. He said, for I am the Lord that healeth thee, in the name of Jesus. I believe by faith that it's done right now, God. I hold fast, God, to your promises, oh God, that we have now because we ask now, God. You know, every time we had an anniversary, we uh, we all went there different little gifts and things like that. And, now remember when Sister Paula had uh you all remember this one? 40th anniversary? Mm -hmm. Amen. He said, be still and know I'm God. And I believe now that we all are coming to that place in our lives, amen. If we if we mean heaven, you know, we mean heaven with business, amen. We got to be still and we got to know that the Lord is God, amen. amen. If I had to take for a subject today. It will be, what is your position? What is your position? With everything that we face and go through in life today, what is your position? Because whether you realize it or not, we all have taken a position. We all have taken a position, and you may not even have realized the position that you have taken. But today I want to talk about three characters but I don't want to call them characters, three individuals, three people in the Bible. Real very, very briefly, and just let's see what their positions were. And then the, with the final one, let's see what his position was. Because I believe that as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, that if we take the right position, then I believe that we can do things in a more excellent way. Amen. If we take the right position, we can do things in a more excellent way. I want to leave this, I want to give you this quote, and then as we close out, I'm going to give you what the Lord showed me about this quote. The quote is A rising tide raises all ships. A rising tide raises all ships. That was a quotation that I heard and when I heard it, it, it just rested on me. And then God began to show me some things with that quotation. But in the word of God, as we look at three examples, and then let me give you this quick testimony too. Yesterday, I had some errands to run, so when I ran my first errand, I had to go somewhere to pick something up and and as I was sitting there, this older gentleman just came and sat right beside me. And he just began to talk. And he began to tell me about this young lady in his life. And he said she was beautiful and, and, and she was French. And he said she was beautiful and I just loved her. And, and then he said, but there was two other women too. And they was, they was 
was beautiful too. But it wasn't as pretty as she was. He said, so I ended up marrying that first one, that first beautiful one. He said, and, 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 and we've been together for a while. And then he just said, and about two, three years ago, she went home to be with the Lord. So then he, as he began to talk, and he began to talk about ISIS and you know, things that's going on in the world today. And then he, began, he gave me, he said, I want to share this dream with you. So just as he said that, they called me and I went up and what I was went for wasn't ready so I came and sat back down. He was right behind me and then he came and sat back down. And he looked at me, he said, was you the guy I was just talking to? I said, yeah, I'm the same guy. He said, okay, so, so let me tell you, tell you about this dream. He said, in his dream, he said, and the ceiling was about as high as this. He said, I fell from a distance about as high as the ceiling. He said, and when I fell, I couldn't get up. And he kept calling his wife. He said, now, I know my wife had already been on to be with the Lord. He said, but I just kept calling. I said, Clara, Clara. His wife name was Clara. He said, Clara, Clara. He said, now, I know Clara's gone home to be with the Lord. He said, and I just kept calling Clara. And then he looked at me. He said, you know what happened? I said, yeah, I know what happened. I said, the Lord reached down and picked you up. He said, yes. And ever since God reached down and picked me up, I've been standing ever since. Amen. I've been standing ever since. He said, so I'm standing with the Lord. Amen. But that was for me. Bible says, be careful how you entertain strangers. Amen. Because it may be an angel run away. Yes, and there have been some things that I've been wrestling with and dealing with. And I just really didn't know how I wanted to deal with it. Mm -hmm. To be honest with you, I still don't know how I want to deal with it. That's right. That's right. But I was wrestling with it and wrestling with it. But just that dream that he had, I knew it came from God for me. Letting me know that God's going to reach down, son, and he's going to pick you up. And when God pick you up, you will be able to stand. Amen. Forever, Amen. you're going to be able to stand. That was for me because of those things that I was wrestling with. So what is your position today? With the things in life that we face and that we deal with, that we go through, what is your position if your children aren't acting right, what is your position? Mm -hmm. If your wife ain't acting right, what is your position? Right. If your husband ain't acting right, what is your position? Right. If folks in the workplace don't treat you like you believe you ought to be treated, what is your position? Yeah. Or if you feel like I should be somewhere else in ministry, what is your position? Yeah. Well, let's see what these three individuals in the Bible did. And then maybe we can help you out with your position. Because everybody in life has to take a position. You always hear Bishop always using the analogy of football. Every player on that field has a position. Every player on that field has something that he is supposed to do. Every player that's called, they know which direction they're supposed to be going. Then if they get plays crossed up and they go the wrong direction, then the play can be a fluke. Mm -hmm. But if you got a good running back who recognizes the fluke, he'll take another direction so that he can gain yardage on the opposing team. Right. So first, let's talk about old Judas. Y'all know Judas, don't you? Yeah. Judas is scary. Mm -hmm. He betrayed Jesus. Right. Judas was one, and, and even with reading my studies, he was one of the ones that even was stealing from his fellow disciples. He was, he was taking it all and stuff and selling it. Judas was doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. He was an old thief, but yet he was walking with the Lord. And some of the disciples kind of got kind of upset because they couldn't understand, well, Lord, we know you know all things. Mm -hmm. And you know, Jesus, uh, Jesus, you know that you were sitting here. He's taking our stuff. Yeah. He's stealing from us. And, and he's doing this and he's doing that. But see, what they didn't understand was Jesus knew it all. 
And Jesus was trying to help Judas to understand himself so that he could come to a place of repentance. Amen. Mm -hmm. So Jesus continued to allow him to do as he was doing right. until that one day when Jesus spoke to him. And Jesus told him that he was going to betray him. He told him what he was going to do. And then what happened? With a kiss on the cheek. For a few coins. He, he, he gave up the Savior. But Jesus already knew this. And he sold him out. How many of us have allowed ourselves to be like a Jews? How many of us have sold out each other? Or sold out somebody in your family? Because you felt that it was the right thing to do. <laughs> or because they got on your nerves so bad that you just didn't care. Well, well, was that the position that you took? When that loved one, when that loved one didn't treat you right, when that loved one borrowed that money from you and to the day they haven't paid it back, well, but yet you treat them some kind of bad. Mm. Was that your position? To treat them bad? But yet we say that we are believers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. right. We say that we hold fast to what God says in his word. Mm -hmm. But yet God has told us to forgive. Yes. And to pray ye one for another. Mm -hmm. Or was you like Judas? You wanted them coins. What is your position? What is your position in the workplace when someone else gets that promotion that you believe that you should have got? Because you got 40 years and they only got 10. But yet, you don't know the educational background that they had in their 10 years of service. You don't know what schooling he or she may have taken to get that promotion. But yet now you're mad and you're angry with the boss. But yet the boss has seen your testimony throughout the office. <laughs> saying that I am a believer. And I trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. But yet, instead of you laying on your face and calling on the name of Jesus and asking God to give you clarity of what's going on. You didn't know that God had a better promotion for you. All right. uh -huh. You was upset at the $30,000 promotion, but yet God had a $70,000 promotion coming your way. And because you caught that attitude, because you took that position, now you done lost a $70,000 promotion. That's right. That's right. What is your position? Judas Ezekiel, he, he walked with the other disciples. And yet, he acted the way that he did. And Jesus knew his heart. And Jesus allowed him to continue. Because Jesus knew when that day was going to come. Let's talk a little bit about Brother Peter. Y'all know what Peter, right? Deny our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 35, Peter said that he will go, he, now this is what he told Jesus, he said, I'll go to prison with you, Lord, I'll go to death with you. But yet, when those circumstances rise up, what happens? What position do we take? When those circumstances in our lives rise up, we tell folks, I'll be with you. When a man finds a wife, the Bible said he finds a good thing. Yes. Now, that's one of the things I struggle with. I don't like calling y'all a good thing, but that's what the Bible said. <laughs> you know, that's what the Bible said. The Bible called you a thing, a good thing. I, I, I really don't like calling y'all a thing, but that's what the Bible said. So I'm asking God to help me with that one so I can figure out something else. You know, Lex. Instead of calling, when we used to call the older saints old, we now call them the aged people. Of 
So he didn't find the wife finding the good thing, and yet he finds favor with the Lord. He finds favor with the Lord. And that man has, has prayed for that woman, and he laid before God for that woman, and, and God has blessed him with that woman. But then he had no idea that when it came down to spending, that she was an alcoholic and spending money. Well, he didn't realize she was a shopaholic, and, and, and he, he noticed that when his bank account started getting lower and lower and lower. So now he's looking at, Lord, you told me a good thing. But, but Lord, I laid, I did what the word say, I found a good thing, and Lord, you told me I found favor, but yet this woman's spending all my money. So now, what position is he going to take? Is he now going to get upset with her? Is he now going to get himself a separate bank account to make sure she can't touch his dollars? What position is he going to take now? I'm in the house. I'm in the house. Tell the truth. I'm in the house. Tell the truth. So what position is that husband going to take now? Or even that wife. When that man found that good thing and found favor with the Lord, she just knew that he was going to treat her like a jewel and like a diamond. But now, it's like he could care less. So now her heart is heavy and grieved. What position is she now going to take? What is your position? When things don't go the way you desire for them to go, even in the church. Well, let's bring it to where we all sit and stand right now. Even in the household of faith. When things don't go the way we want them to go. Or things don't look the way we think it ought to look. What is going to be our position? Are we going to take the position of a Judas? Are we going to take the position of a Peter? They say, I ain't a member of that church. I just go there. Are we going to take the position of Judas and want to steal folks' joy and feel, feel, steal folks' love and laughter? Would you be a Judas or would you be a Peter? What would be your position? What would be your position when all else fails in your life? What would be your position? Where will you go? What will you do? What will you say? What is your position? The Lord told Peter, he said, before the cock crow, the rice, you would have denied me. And I remember something that my wife had said one time. She said, Peter was sincere, but he was sincerely wrong. He was sincere, but he was sincerely wrong. And a lot of us can be the same way. We can be sincere about our motive and our actions. But our motive and our actions can be sincerely wrong. So now we have come to a place in our lives that you've got to take a position. You've got to take a position in your finances. You've got to take a position in your walk with the Lord. You got to take a position even in the workplace. Mm -hmm. You can't go to work being like your co-workers Amen. and yet you want to come into the house of God Amen. and you got the best dance in the house. Well. You got the best praise and the best worship in the house. Well. But when you're at work, you're uh -huh. acting just like your co-workers. Right oh, <laughs> I got folks right now that they know they need God. And they know they need to come to the household of faith. But they keep talking about when I get myself together. Yes, yes. I said, don't wait until you get yourself together. Right. I said, you need to come to the household of God now. Right. Let God clean you up. Yes. There's one brother I shared with you all before that's dealing with sarcoidosis. I gave him co pastor's testimony. He came to work on Thursday, and he was in a lot of pain on his right side. And I said, I know what's going on with you. 
And he said, well, the man upstairs, he put it on me. He put it on me. He know. I said, the devil is a liar. I said, first of all, there's no man upstairs. Wow. All right? Because the Bible says they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. All right? God is a spirit. Amen. So there is no man upstairs. Amen. I said, now, what you're going through, God wants to deliver you from. I said, remember the testimony that I gave you of my co-pastor. You know the first thing he said to me? You mean Tim, I got to give up me? I said, that's how God directed her. I'm telling you, come to the household of faith. Hear the word of the Lord. Let God get into your spirit. God will lead you and direct you and God will guide you. But as long as you remain out here in pain, I said, you're not going to get any deliverance. Right. Amen. You got to come to the household of faith. You got to come and meet God, my brother. Yes. Come meet God. Yes. Come and hear what God has to say about yes. your circumstance and about your situation. That's right. yes. I said, God is a deliverer. Yes. God is a healer. Yes. God is a keeper. Yes. And I said, you got to come and hear what the Lord has to say about your situation. Yes. I said, if you don't, I said, look, you come, you meet the woman, you let her tell you her testimony. Yes. One day I saw him smoking a cigar. I said, see, look at you. <laughs> he said, he said, I ain't in hell. I said, no, but you're putting things into your body. You're not helping yourself. Right. But of course, he went to the doctor for his pain, and the doctor gave him some medication, and he came to work. He said, I feel pretty good today. I said, yeah, because you're on them drugs. All right, all right. You're on them drugs that the doctor didn't give you. I said, I serve a doctor that don't put you on no drugs. Amen. I serve a doctor that will deliver you. Yeah. But you got to take a position. Right. Don't keep making up excuses so you can do the things that you're doing. That's right. All right, now. Right. I've been talking to him for five years. I've been telling him for five years, come off the corner. Because then the fellas meet on the corner every day and drink. Mm. I've been ministering to him and I've been telling him. Now one of them, he's out for about the next four months. He had a knee surgery, but he also dealing with his kidneys. Drinking. Nay, he don't drink no more. I said, but if you listen five years ago, you wouldn't be dealing with your kids. Well. And that gentleman I was just talking about, now he's dealing with his kidneys. Mm. I said, how much more is it going to take? For you to trust and believe that God can do it. Yes. How much more is it going to take? And I wouldn't share with him about the home going service of last week because I probably would have scared. <laughs> if I, you know, because you know, Brother Darren had sarcoidosis. And if I had shared with him, I just told him, I said, I got a home going service to go to. That's all I would tell him. I said, one of the brothers from the church went on to be with the Lord. You know, because I know if I had told him what his elder was, he was scared. Mm -hmm. So it's time for him to take a position. It's time for all of us to take a position. Yes. A lot of us, we come to church when we want to come to church. Mm -hmm. When we feel good about coming to church. Mm -hmm. And then when we don't feel good about coming to church, we don't come to church. Right. Right. You took a position. Your position was in your feelings. Your position was in your thoughts. Amen. That was your position. Amen. And it didn't do you, as old folks say, a hill of beans. <laughs> didn't do you no good. The Bible said, fail not to assemble yourself together Amen. with the saints of God. Amen. I don't care what I'm going through in my mind and my body. Uh -huh. I'm going to find myself in the household of God so that I can draw strength. Right. Yes. That's right. Thank you, Thank you. I know I don't smile all the time, and I know y'all know that. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. I walk past Minister Mason Friday night, she looked me and said, Smile. <laughs> See? I don't smile all the time. <laughs>
to us, so y'all pray for him. <laughs> and then to your prayer request, we will pray for Brother Harvey to keep a smile on his face. <laughs> See, because I go through things too, but I, you know, and y'all pray for this too, because Bishop told me this one time before, but y'all, I'm, I'm just one of the people that I just don't share a lot. That's right. If I'm going through with my body, I don't share. I'm telling you right now, you can ask my wife. She couldn't tell you what I'm going through, because I won't even tell her. Things I might deal with in the workplace, I don't come home and tell her. Work stays at work. That's right, sir. I don't come home and say, baby, you know what? Them demons, them devils, and they this, and they that. But the one thing I did tell all of them at work, I said, my daughter graduates in 2017. I said, so add it up. 2017, I think I'm out the door. I said, unless I get another position or another raise where I got to stay three years to get it in retirement, other than that, 2017. <laughs> when that girl walk across that stage, I'm going to lift up my left hand, <laughs> and then I'm going to lift up the right hand. <laughs> and I might even do a Deacon Smith and lift up my feet. <laughs> 2017. <laughs> but you got to take a position, church. Even when you're going through pains and turmoil, you got to take a position. I admire Mother Franklin so much when she's going through. Because one thing she'll do, she'll go and she'll lay down in that prayer tab, she'll lock herself up in that prayer tab, and she'll lay before God until God delivers. Amen. I've seen that woman of God get delivered from so many things because she took a position. Her position is trusting God. Her position is doing the will of God. Her position is no devil in hell is going to take me out. Amen. No devil in hell is going to destroy my mind or my body because I'm going to take a position. Amen. You got to take a position in life. You just can't be one of the ones like a leaf just blowing in the wind. If the wind blows east, you go there. If the wind blows west, you go there. You got to take a position. When you take a position, I promise you, it'll bring strength. It'll bring strength to you, glory to God. It'll give you stability. After that, you have suffered a while. He said, I will establish, I will strengthen, and I will settle you. Amen. After, how many, anybody suffering? Anybody that been through some stuff? Amen. Glory Amen. be to God. Amen. So you know, you know, you know, been through some stuff. Now God said, I'm ready to settle you now. Well, I'm ready to establish you. Thank you. Or in English, very establish you. I'm ready to establish you now. Yes. Because you've been through some stuff. You can share your testimony. Thank you. you can let folks know, glory to God, where you've been and what you're going through. Wow. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to, glory to God. Glory to God. You must take a position. you got to take a position even when it comes to your children. That's right. Because they think they got all the answers, but they don't. But it's all right. But in the book of Isaiah, chapter 38, let's talk about this, this third position. Isaiah, chapter 38, verse number 1. said, in those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Yeah. Let's take a little. Stop right there at that intersection. The man of God, the prophet, came to the, to the king Hezekiah to let him know, get your house in order, because you're going to die. I'm just letting you know you're going to die. Well, Today is your day. You're going to die. Now, Hezekiah could have taken a position where he could have said, well, Lord, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. Yeah. And I've kept the faith. Yeah. If you're ready for me, Lord, then let's go. He could have taken that position. Yeah. Or he could have taken the position, he could have been like, oh, ho, what you mean, me? Who do you think you are to come and tell me to get my house in order because the Lord told you to tell me that I'm going to die? Uh -huh. Who do you think you are? Well. Prophet Isaiah to come and tell me that? Mm -hmm. Oh, Hezekiah could have said, mm, yeah, whatever. 
you know, like some of the young folks say today, whatever. Right. He could have taken that position. He could have. But he took a position of prayer. He took a position to turn his face to the wall. He turned to the wall. And I like what he did when he began to pray. Let's see what King Hezekiah did. Then Hezekiah turned his face towards the wall and prayed unto the Lord. Yes. And said, Remember now, O Lord, well, I beseech thee how I have walked before thee in truth yes. and with a perfect heart. Yes. When the praise team was singing earlier, talking about the truth of God's word. Uh -huh. When they were talking about God is able. Uh -huh. See, this man of God, Hezekiah, had a life that he could turn to the face of the wall. And he can say that. But how many of us in here today know, you know that your life is not where it ought to be with the Lord. And you know that I can't go turn my face to the wall. I can't talk to the Lord like that. I can't tell God, Lord, look, I can see thee. Lord, you know what I've been doing. Lord, you know where I've been going. And the Lord will say, where you been? And where are you going? Do you have that kind of life? Okay. Are you living that kind of life right now? Uh -huh. Where you can walk and turn your face to that wall. Amen. Is your heart perfect towards God? Yes. See, Hezekiah had a heart that was perfect towards God. Yes. Yes. And we were reminded of that in 2 Chronicles 16 and 9. Where he said, the eyes of the Lord go to and fro throughout the whole earth. Yes. Showing himself strong in behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. Is your heart perfect towards God today? Is your heart where it needs to be with the Lord today? See, because if your heart is perfect towards God, we can do the more excellent way. But if your heart is not perfect towards God, if your heart is not where it needs to be with God, then you got some problems. You got some troubles. You got some situations in your life. And today, you need to take a position. You need to take a position and say, Lord, Lord, I've fallen short. And I need you, God. Lord, I know I haven't prayed like I should have prayed, God. But God, today, God, is a new day in my life. God, I want to take the position, God, of a true believer, Lord. Not just one that believes, but a true believer. Because the word of God even lets us know that he carries us. Says, I believe the Lord help thou my unbelief. The word of God. Maybe there's some scriptures, amen, that you're telling the cross that you just don't have clarity. Yeah. Yeah. That's why there's Bible studies. Amen. That's why there's Sunday school. Amen. Because if you need help in those areas, help is here. That's right. But you got to go where the help is. Yes. You got to find the help. Yeah. You don't always run to the doctor when you're sick. Well, yeah. You fall on your knees and you pray. Right. And you start saying, Lord, here I am, God, a wrench undone. Yeah. God, I need your help today, Father. Lord, I need you, Lord, to direct me and lead me and guide me. God, today I got to take a position. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. I guarantee you, if I ask every husband in here, don't raise your hands. If I ask every husband in here, has your wife ever gotten on your nerves? I guarantee every last one of y'all can raise your hands. But don't do it, because I don't want nobody to go home fight. I want everybody to get the testimony. Glory to God. Amen. And then I can look at the wife. Don't, don't. Okay, Bob, let me, let me get y'all. Katrina looking at me. Uh, wives, I know y'all can say we husbands have got on y'all nervous sometimes. Don't raise your hand for me. Amen. But it's all right. That means that there is an area for growth. Yes, right. Yes. Because when things like that begin to happen, if you got your war clothes on, uh -huh. go into your war room uh -huh. and start getting on your knees and start calling on the Lord. And say, Lord, I don't like the way my wife treats me. Lord, let her love me like I love her. And God, help me to understand what she's going through. And I 
promise you, if you're sincere, if your heart is permanent towards God, God will give you the answer. Amen. But today we gotta have a perfect heart like Hezekiah. Because his heart was perfect towards God. And when Hezekiah turned his face to the wall, when Hezekiah began to pray, glory to God, I like what God did. God, the man of God was walking away. God reached out. Go on back to Hezekiah for 15 more years. I guess I was like, no, you just told me to go tell this man he's gonna die. Then you want me to go back and tell him he's gonna live. Which one is it, Lord? Is he gonna die? Who is he gonna live? I said go back and tell him. I'm in 15 more years. I heard his prayer. And I received his prayer. And I'm gonna move upon his prayer. Because his heart was perfect towards me. Because he is a man of God. And I need him for the next 15 years. Glory to God. Hezekiah took a position. He did not allow, amen, the promise that came. And it was a promise, y'all. Because God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. When God says something, you can count on it. But God told me, he's going to tell him. Tell him, Hezekiah. Tell Hezekiah, I said, he's going to die. Today is your day. But the man of God didn't allow himself to become sorrowful. He didn't sit there and snap and grunt and cry and say, oh my God, what am I going to do? You know, Lord, I, I, I got more things I want to do with the kingdom. You know, when you read it through the word of God, Hezekiah was one of the greatest kings in the Bible. He did more, more blessing, great things for the people than all those before him. And the Bible even says after him. That's powerful. Before him and after him. Greater, power, more powerful things. Because his heart was perfect towards God. God knows who to put in position. And God knows where to put them at. Because God knows they can get the work done. But what is your position today? Will you take the position of a Hezekiah and turn, well, no, not will you. Can you take the position of a Hezekiah? Is your life in right standards with God where you can take the position of a Hezekiah and you can turn your face to the wall? Or at midnight, you can be like Paul and Silas and you can lay down, prostrate before the Lord and call upon the name of Jesus. Glory to God. See, I, I, I know when my, when my wife went down, they visited Devon when Devon was going through. And my wife called back and she was telling me this and telling me that. I said, well, baby, I guess it's time for one of the midnight prayers. I ain't got no problem going down at midnight praying and laying before the Lord and talking to God. And I know with my prayers, your prayers, everybody else praying for him, God heard our prayers. Amen. Amen. Now that brother's up, he's walking. Yes. Glory to God. This, this amen is to continue to lose your brother lost for 70, 80 pounds. Amen. amen. And he's yet walking. Yes. Glory to God. Why? Because the saints of God came together and prayed. Yes. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. That's what I'm talking about. See, God heard those hearts that was right before him. And God moved upon those hearts when they prayed for this young man to say his time was not yet. Yes. And I can even believe when he was in what they wanted to call an induced coma that he was praying. Yes. Brother just got married. Oh, he didn't get the, get the woman, <laughs> and he had the chance to enjoy the wife of his youth, as the Bible says. Uh -huh. yes. He probably want to enjoy his wife. Say, he probably knew, he probably, I can't tell y'all for sure, but yes. he probably led, led it, Lord, I just got married. Lord, I ain't got a chance to enjoy my wife. God, bring me back, Lord. I'll be, Lord, every area of my life that was contrary to the word, God, I'll fix it. Glory to God. I'm telling you, all that brother talk about is the Lord. Yeah. Not that he didn't talk about it at first, yeah. but he talked about it even more than that. Yeah. Why? Because God heard his prayer. God heard the saints' prayer. Why? Because the saints that was praying hug was perfect towards God. Yeah. They was in the right position to pray to God. Yeah. Are you in the right position today to take your cares before the Lord? Yeah. And don't by faith that God will deliver. Yeah. And don't by faith that God will hear your prayer. Yeah. And that God will answer and move expeditiously. Word, word. Expeditiously, that God will move on your behalf. And that God will do a great thing, not a new thing, but a great thing. Hallelujah. Somebody here today needs God to do a great thing in their life. But you gotta change your position today. You can't wait until tomorrow. Because the Bible says tomorrow is your promise. You gotta come today and take the right position before the Lord today. And I promise you, if you take that right position,
that God's going to answer. Yes. That God's going to deliver. Yes. Now, that quotation I gave y'all earlier. Talking about a rising tide raises all ships. This is the analogy that God gave me. This is the dock. Right here, this is the dock. And all of you all are ships in this dock. Amen? Amen. This is the dock and all of you all are ships in the dock. Every ship that's built has a direction to go. Amen? Yes. They have a destination. The Bible talks about destinations. We all have a destination, church. We all have a direction to go. Now watch this. The rising tide. The rising tide is the anointing. The anointing. That's your rising tide. When the anointing raises up then the ships raises up. Amen. 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 You all are the ships. Well, we are the ships. I can say y'all we. We are the ships. Yes. Then the direction that you have to go. There's a destination. Yes. There's a direction that you have to go. There's a destination. Yes. So when the tide rises, the anointing. Come on. Yes. When the tide rises, the anointing. When the tide rises, the anointing, yes. the ships rise. Yes. Because how many of y'all know that when ships go in the dock, that they have to have a tugboat to pull them back out? Uh -huh. And if the water is too low, the tugboat ain't going to do them no good. That's right. Because the bottom of the ship is going to hit the sand. Yeah. But when the tide rises, it raises that ship above the sand. Some of y'all got sand in your life, which is your troubles. Some of y'all got some barges in your life, which is your troubles. And today, the anointing is going to rise to raise you up off the sand, off your barges. Glory to God so that you can go in those directions that God wants you to go. Yes, Lord Jesus. A rising tide raises, didn't say one ship. All ships. All ships. So every last one of us in here is a, is a ship. And we all have a destination to go. Whether your destination is Puerto Rico, California, whether it's Alaska, where my brother just come back from, no matter whatever your destination is, the tide is rising. The anointing is rising. Yes. And as you're raised up off the sand, then you can travel. Glory to God. Those troubles in your life, the barges in your life, those issues in your life, glory to God. God said today, I want to raise you up. I want to raise you up off of those, off those beds of sand and all those barges that got you held down. You know, God said, I want to raise you up today. Yes, Lord Jesus. Because there's a direction for you to go. Don't think that you don't have a direction. Don't think that God doesn't have something for you to do. Yes, he does. Everybody in here, God has a work for all of us. Yes, he does. He didn't call all of us to be pastors. No, he didn't. He didn't call all of us to be ministers. Uh -huh. He didn't call all of us to be evangelists or deacons. That's right. But there's a whole lot more work in ministry yes, that a lot of folks don't even want to talk about. Glory. 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 Yes, Lord. The rising tide raises all ships. What is your position today? What position will you take today? 
Will you take the position of whatever? Will you take the position of, yeah, but Brother Holmes, you just don't know my pain? Mm. I guarantee you God knows. I can say the same thing to you. I can say you don't know my pain. But I'm going to help you today to find the right position. And you know what that right position? How you can get to that right position? You know how you can get to that right position? This is how you can get there. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope it's not too late. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Give me you. Give me you. That's, that's where you get your position. Give me you. I hope that I delay. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. It's me. Thank you. 